All you need is a spark. These were the words playing in my mind during the morning commute. When you think about it, it's a spark that gets a fire going. It's a spark that gets a car running. It's a spark that gets a relationship started. All you need is a spark. I was pondering my own marriage of 28 years and reminiscing about the many sparks we encountered over the years. It began with the spark of first love, then came the spark of marriage, and a couple years later, the spark of our first child, our first home, first new car. With each new spark and each new accomplishment, it was building an unquenchable fire. I read a quote the other day which said, learning to love is like lighting a fire and every action of love is a spark. It begins with a spark of emotion and then methodically you begin to feed the flame with bigger sticks such as dating, long phone conversations, and even flirty DMs. As the fire burns brighter and stronger, you eventually add logs to the fire and the result is four letters, L-O-V-E. Before you know it, love has you. Love has you doing things you'd never do. Love has you saying things you'd never say. Love has you walking down an aisle and saying I do to a lifelong friendship and commitment. What began as a small spark is now a burning fire that is expressed in the confines of marriage. All you needed was a spark. Blogger Adam Albrecht once said, Relationships are like fires. They need a spark to start then they need a regular influx of fuel to burn warm and bright. You see, the continuation of your marriage is cultivated through intentional sparks of open communication, regular date nights, showing appreciation, asking curious questions, and learning from one another. The husband and wife are feeding the fire. They are paying close attention to the flame. Their company is warm, their fire is bright, their love is strong, and to think it all began with the spark. You see, something interesting occurs over time. It almost happens like a slow motion picture. The flames that once danced in temple have now lost their rhythm. The sparks that once ignited love are now being used to burn and injure each other. The sparks are now a weapon of marital destruction. The marriage is now being suffocated by the thick, dark, insidious smoke. The relational challenges, the unresolved conflicts, and the unwillingness to forgive are like pouring buckets of water on the fire. Like a slow fade, the spark is fading. The marital drift slowly pulls you farther apart. The spark is weak. This explains why the average length of marriage prior to divorce is eight years. Let that sink in. Eight years. So how does a couple keep the sparks flying? How can a husband and wife reignite a love that is fading? You see, it comes down to three important words. Remember, repent, and redo. Remember the commitment you made on your wedding day, for better or worse, for richer or poorer, till death do we part. The second word is repent, which simply means to apologize and own your mistakes, own your failures. It's amazing how much healing can occur between a husband and wife when 10 little words are said, I am sorry for what I did, I repent. The third word is redo. Redo dating. Redo meaningful communication. Redo expressing appreciation. Redo the acts of love that once ignited those initial sparks. Remember, repent, and redo. Three words that can reignite any marriage. The challenge is to rise above the uncomfortable. Rise above the pain and focus on the bigger picture. 
Because when you put in the work day after day, week after week, and year after year, you will leave a trail of sparks for others to follow. And when your children and grandchildren ask you how you made it work, you can reply with a smile on your face and say, We kept creating the spark.